Hello, in this video we are going to discuss reaction equilibria as well as the Van't Hoff equation. So last time we were going over uh, Gibbs free energy as well as entropy and enthalpy. But now let's talk about the condition where a reaction is at equilibrium. So what does it mean to be at equilibrium? Well, at equilibrium, the concentrations of the products and the reactants are constant. Now, remember, this doesn't mean that the concentrations of the reactants and products are equal. Uh, now that can happen, but equilibrium means that the uh, concentrations of the products and the reactants are not changing, so they're just staying the same. So for instance, let's say we have reactants A and B, and they're forming products C and D. Now, let's say initially we have just reactants. Now, those are going to react to form the products, but in many cases, the products can react to reform the reactants. So not only do we have a forward reaction, but we also have a reverse reaction, which is why we have the two arrows there. Now you might also remember from general chemistry that the forward reaction occurs at a specific rate and the reverse reaction also occurs at a specific rate. So uh, we'll label those Kf for forward rate and then Kr for reverse rate. So really at equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction are the same. So that's another way to think about equilibrium. Okay, so now let's write out uh, the equilibrium constant. So you might remember that to write the equilibrium constant expression, we take the concentration of the products and divide that by the concentration of the reactants. And then uh, sometimes we also raise that to a power. So for instance, if um, let's say there was a two to one ratio for the reactants, we would raise the concentration of A to a power of two for example, but uh, we won't deal with that right now. We'll just talk about the equilibrium expression in general terms. All right, so this would equal the concentration of C times the concentration of D over the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And again, if, if you did have that two to one ratio for A and B, you'd raise A to the power of two. Okay, so what does this look like on an energy diagram? So let's draw uh, our relative free energies for our reactants versus our products. Okay, so let's say we start with just the reactants A and B. Those would have a pretty high energy um, we're going to assume that they're pretty unstable, which is why they react. And then same for the products, C and D. What if we just start with C and D? We can see that they can react to form A and B. 
So we'll assume they're also at a pretty high unstable energy. Now, what happens as we approach equilibrium? Well, the energy of this reaction is going to decrease as A and B react because they're becoming more stable. But that also happens for C and D. They become more stable as they react. And eventually, we hit what's called an energy minimum. And that's where we reach equilibrium. So there's kind of these two competing forces, the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. But at some point, we reach a place where everyone's the happiest they can be, right? So uh, A and B have reacted enough that they're pretty stable. C and D have reacted enough that they're pretty stable. So we hit this equilibrium point where um, the concentrations of the products and the reactants stay constant. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not still reacting. Um, a and B can still react at equilibrium, and C and D can still react at equilibrium. But they're just going back and forth at the same pace so that the concentrations stay constant. Okay. So now let's talk about the Van Hoff equation. And hopefully this will be review as well. So the Van Hoff equation, you might remember, is delta G, so Gibbs free energy, is equal to negative RT ln, so natural log of KEQ, our equilibrium constant. So let's review what each of these terms are. Um, so R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, at least in this instance. So remember, that's our gas constant. And then T is our temperature in Kelvin. Um, the LN, again, stands for natural log. And KEQ is the um, equilibrium constant. So we have the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. And there's no unit for KEQ. Um, they would cancel for the most part. All right, now what if we rearrange this equation so that we're solving for KEQ. What would that look like? So in order to solve for KEQ, we'd have to move everything over to the left-hand side of the equation, but then we'd also have to get rid of that natural log. So we would have to take the inverse of the natural log, which is E, and we would raise that to the negative delta G over RT. Now, let's just consider for a second, what if delta G is zero? What would KEQ equal? So let's plug that in. Let's see what that would equal. All right, so that would give us e to the negative 0 over rt, which just simplifies to e to the negative 0, which is just 0, so we can say it's positive. And e to the 0 is just 1. Now, remember that KEQ is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So if that's equal to 1, 
then that tells us that the concentration of the products is equal to the concentration of the reactants. So earlier I said that equilibrium does not mean that the concentration of the products is equal to the concentration of the reactants, but it can happen. And this is the one scenario where that can happen. So if your free energy is zero, then that means the products are, or the concentration of the products is equal to the concentration of the reactants. Okay, so let's consider another scenario. What if delta G is equal to negative 20 kilojoules per mole? Um, let's assume that the temperature is 298. What percent of the reaction will be product at equilibrium? Okay, now if we drew this as um, a diagram, so our reaction coordinate diagram, we know that delta G is negative, so that means that our reactants start out at a really high energy and our products are really stable because remember delta G is the difference between the reactant and product energy. And in this case, it's negative. So if the products are more stable than the reactants, that tells us we should have a lot of product, right? Compared to reactants. So that's our prediction for this uh, problem. We're predicting that we'll have a really high percent of product at equilibrium. Okay, so let's plug in um, negative 20 kilojoules per mole into our equation for the equilibrium constant. So we're going to use this equation because that will give us the ratio of products to reactants like we saw on the last slide here. Now it won't equal one, but we're just looking at the ratio of products and reactants. Okay, so let's plug in everything we know. So we know that um, delta G is negative 20 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and then we divide by R, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Oh, I already noticed we have joules versus kilojoules. So we should probably convert kilojoules to joules. So I'm just going to erase this and plug in our conversion. So how many joules are in a kilojoule? Okay, and then we'll plug in RT, so we have 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times 298 Kelvin in the denominator. Okay, so let's plug that into our calculators. So you can pause the video if you need to go grab your calculator and we'll see what we get. All right, so I got 3,205 as my equilibrium constant. Okay, so remember KEQ 
is equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. So this would equal 3,205. So that means the concentration of my products is 3,205. And the concentration of my reactants is just one. Okay, so if the concentration of the products is equal to 3,205 and the concentration of the reactants is equal to 1, how many uh, products do I have versus reactants? Or what percent of the reaction will be product at equilibrium? So the percent of the product will equal the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants plus the concentration of products. And then of course we'll multiply by 100. So in the denominator we're really just dividing by the total. Okay, so let's plug in 3,205 over, uh, let's see, 3,205 plus 1. So that's 3,206. So that's the sum of the reactants and products. Multiply that by 100, and we get 99.97%. So that's how many, uh, or that's the percentage of the reaction that will be products at equilibrium. So this essentially is an irreversible reaction. So you might remember that if you have a ton of product and only a little bit of reactant at equilibrium, that means that the product is highly favored, right? So this might be something like hydrochloric acid where there really is no equilibrium here. We really just have a forward arrow going to the ions because um, hydrochloric acid is such a strong acid that it completely dissociates. Or ionizes, I guess, is the better term. Oh, okay, so we went over um, the Van Hoff equation and we kind of saw an example of how to use the Van Hoff equation to figure out how much of a product we have at equilibrium um, we also saw a scenario where the concentration of products does equal the concentration of reactants. So that's when um, delta G is equal to zero. Okay. So um, next time we're going to discuss kinetics. So some of this might be review as well. But uh, we'll go over the rate constant a little bit more. So those K values we drew earlier for the forward and reverse reactions. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. And I will see you in the next video.